Oh, I'm getting eaten alive by bugs. I am at the Wachusett Mountain Wildlife Preserve today, ladies and gentlemen. I came here to talk to you guys about van stuff. I've been thinking a lot about the best purchases I've ever made in my two years of van life. And I put together a little list, not necessarily in chronological order, but in order of importance to me. I know that I wasted a lot of money on stuff in my van build that turned out I never really needed. I think a lot of people are going to do the same thing. I also know that people's van builds are all going to be different for different purposes. But these five things worked so well for me, I would recommend them to everybody. So here we go, in order of importance to me. Sorry folks, I had to interrupt that for wild raspberries. I'm a sucker for those things. Anyway, the most important single thing I ever bought was my Jackery 1000 portable battery. Now, I'm not being sponsored by Jackery or any other brand for that matter. I know Blue Eddy is also a brand. There's a bunch of them. The reason this is the most important thing for me is because I started my build very rough. I was sleeping on plywood and crates and the first cross-country trip I did with my van the floor was all like exposed joists and stuff it was dangerous I didn't have my electrical system built out yet so I relied on that Jackery 1000 I loved it now my electrical system is all built out now it's very good I'll put a link below to my electrical schematic but I still use that Jackery 1000 I use it when I'm camping I put it on the picnic table I also use it for charging through shore power. I have a shore power connection inside my van. So in the winter, during gaps when I need more power, I'm not driving enough, I'll just charge the Jackery battery, plug it in and charge my house batteries that way. Yeah, that thing gets so much use. You gotta get yourself something like that. Sorry, there's blueberries here too, folks. Anyway, the number two most important thing that I bought for my van is the DC to DC charger. A DC to DC charger lets you power your house lithium battery bank by driving through the car's alternator. Now, it's not as complicated as it sounds. Really, all you're doing is taking two leads from your DC to DC charger that you can buy on Amazon and connecting it to the positive and negative nodes of your car battery. That's it. It's way easier to install than people think. And it by far delivers the most power, the most reliable power. It puts shore power and solar charging to shame. If you're gonna build up a continuous power charging situation in your van, which you probably will, I would go with a DC to DC charger first, then consider shore power, then consider solar panels. The blueberries on this bush right here are so fat I can't believe they're wild they're almost like GMO like someone planted something from the grocery store the number three best thing I bought for the van the kitchen sink yeah and a basic plumbing system your plumbing system doesn't have to be as elaborate as mine is you can just have like a foot pump something I don't care but the ability to wash your hands and wash stuff and also pour liquids down a drain, you take it for granted once it's gone. I just don't think it's sustainable not to have something like that. The sink also provides a great place to store stuff when you're driving, like a bag of groceries that you don't wanna put away yet. I use it all the time, but yeah, I cannot imagine having a van and not having a sink in it. It just seems so, I don't know, uncomfortable. All right, folks, here's number four. I'll try to deliver this message without my mouth full of berries. Number four is my diesel heater. I actually have a gas heater. This is critical if you live in a colder climate, even if you don't. In New England, where I live, I need to run my heater probably nine months of the year, if not more, whenever it gets too cold. Now, a gas heater works by sipping fuel right off your car's fuel tank. So re you refill it when you refill your car's tank. It's as convenient as it could possibly be. It uses very low draw. It uses like nine amps for the first minute. And then it's just like a steady two amps like all the time after that. It also has a thermostat so you can set the temperature 
unlike your car's house air conditioning where it just has like a dial. You don't have to run your car's battery to run it. And it sips fuel. I mean, it takes like next to no fuel. Maybe like an ounce of fuel can last you all night. I don't know. It's very efficient. If you want to get like a Mr. Buddy heat heater or a propane based thing, just be warned that a one pound tank of propane releases 1.6 pounds of water inside your van, which can called, cause mold and rust. Yeah, that's actually true. You can look it up. The chemical reaction produces more water than propane. It can destroy your van pretty quickly. So you don't want to be doing propane heater for too long. Yeah, get yourself a gas or a diesel heater. I bought an S-Bar. There are also great Chinese ones on the market for much cheaper. You're going to need it, though. Oh, check this out. Look who's coming to join me. Okay, they're coming right up to me. I think these aren't the animals that ram you, correct? Yeah, you like that? Okay, that was unexpected. Those animals are very oily. I don't know if it's sweat or what, but I feel like I'm covered in grease. Anyway, I still have to get to number five. This here, folks, is number five. It's the luggable loo. Yes, I'm talking toilets. You're gonna need a situation in your van for sure. You have some options. There are black tanks, which is what come on most RVs, like a permanently affixed septic tank in your van where you flush it just like you would in a house and it stays in the septic tank. Nah, -uh, I don't like those. Listen guys, black tanks are disgusting. Not only does it gross me out thinking about having to drive around with all my waste inside my vehicle for weeks on end, the headache of finding places to dispose of that is gonna add so much discomfort to your life. And also, they smell, they stink, they are so unsanitary. Another popular option is composting toilets, which are kind of like a cross between what this is and a house system. You flush it, there's like a composting mechanism. They're big devices. They take up a lot of space. They might be more comfortable than the luggable loo, but they are a lot of work to maintain. I mean, you're really gonna be worshiping the poop if you get one of those things. I hate to say it. You have to clean it from time to time, take it apart, roll up your sleeves, scrub out the poop. It's gross. Do you really wanna deal with that? The luggable loo is basically just what it sounds. It's a bucket with like this toilet lid type thing. So it feels like you're sitting on a toilet seat. You can actually buy the lid replacement at Walmart. You use that, a contractor bag and kitty litter. You do your business and when you're done, you tie up, uh, up the bag, you seal it and you dispose of it in a public waste bin, just like you would with diapers or dog waste. It's that easy. You can get rid of the stuff, get get it out of your van as soon as you're done with your business. You know, I don't I don't like the idea of it all lingering around inside. This is by far the easiest, most sanitary, perfectly comfortable toilet situation, in my opinion. You're also gonna just save a ton of money, space in your van, and headache, because you won't ever have to clean this thing. Just throw it away and move on with your life. That is my number five. One more thing I wanna to mention to you guys about all the five products I just spoke about. The main limiting factor with these portable Jackery batteries, whether you get Jackery or another brand, is not how much capacitance they have, but how long it takes to charge them. I have the 1000 watt Jackery battery. It takes about eight hours to charge. So I can charge it while I'm working on my laptop during the workday. I know Jackery sells an even more powerful battery with like twice the capacitance, but that could take you like a day and a half to charge the thing. Are you really gonna have the time? That's why I think there's diminishing returns with big battery banks like this. The second note is about DC to DC chargers. I have an 18 amp DC to DC. I originally had a 30 amp DC to DC charger, and guess what? It destroyed my alternator. That's one thing you have to be very concerned about. I know with a 2021 Ford Transit, it could not 
handle all that extra current being output. Personally, I would not risk going with a 30 amp DC to DC charger or higher. Third thing, with the gas or diesel heaters, make sure you learn how the thing works because the main thing that I keep having to replace in mine is the fuel pump. The fuel pump you can buy on Amazon for like 200 bucks. You, it may not be obvious what is not working in your system, but check the fuel pump first. If you get like an S-Bar or a Wabasto, those things are built like a tank with uh, knockoff cheap heaters on Amazon. I've heard horror stories about them breaking down, so purchase at your own risk and learn how they work. Fourth comment is about kitchen sinks. Make sure you get one that's deep. You want one that's like at least a foot deep. I know it can drain if you just get like a bowl shaped thing. You're gonna want a square, cause like I said, that thing works as a storage device all the time, just for when I'm driving around for putting loose stuff in. And last but not least, about having the luggable loo or whatever your toilet situation is. Like I said, make sure you have something I try not to use mine unless it's an emergency, but I see some people skimping on that and just like going off in the woods or something and just making a mess everywhere. You're gonna want something and you're gonna wanna keep your place as clean as possible. If you do get one of those trendy composting toilets, just be warned, they require maintenance and you're gonna get your hands dirty. All right, folks, I think that covers just about everything. Like I said, this is my experience having evolved through two years of van life. I wasted a lot of money. I'm trying to save you guys money. I live in my van. I tour New England all the time. If you want to see more stuff like this, subscribe. Otherwise, hit that like button below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.